you guys i finally did it i became a millionaire this time for real and i'm gonna tell you how you can easily do it too let's get into it one stacker on a journey to find silver international stack Hey everybody, International Stacker here. Thank you for coming to my channel. 70% of you watching are not subscribed. Help me beat that evil YouTube algorithm. And please subscribe, please smash a like button and hit those notifications on because the Mega Gaw, G-A-W stands for giveaway. God, the real true Mega Gaw is coming. And then the last two or three, the first place was a kilo of silver and a giveaway, some gold. You don't want to miss it. That being said, I know what you came here for. Who cares about a kilo of silver or some gold? If you could become a millionaire, and I'm gonna tell you how right now. But first, I wanna do a big thank you and shout out to Gold Mountain. They're the official sponsors of this video. Their information's in the description below. They just acquired a soon-to-be operational mine at the cost of only $18 an ounce. Are you kidding me? And their, their strategic advisor has the coolest name in the industry. We'll talk more about them later. But right now, I'm going to get into it and show you how I became a, lady, uh, a millionaire. And ladies and gentlemen, I am now a millionaire. And the secret is in this package and you can easily replicate it. With that being said, enough rambling. Let's get into it. And I want you to guess right now in the comments below what you think is in here. How I Became a Millionaire will give you five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay, envelope within an envelope. This is getting sketchy. This is gonna shock you guys. Okay, so within the envelope, we had another envelope. We had a piece of paper. What you see here, look how many zeros are here. Three, six, one. This is one million Zimbabwe dollars. There's 50 here. So technically, I have 50 million Zimbabwe dollars right here in front of you. Here is the shocking truth and story of why people stack gold and silver. And if you've never seen a video like this, do yourself a va favor, watch at least a few minutes of this. This is going to change your minds and show you what is on the horizon. In 1980, one Zimbabwe dollar was worth more than a US dollar. You could trade in one, one of their dollars and it would be worth a dollar 47 in the United States. Since 1980, their currency has been re-denominated three times. What does that mean? They had to remove zeros because the value in it dropped like a rock. And how was that? Inflation. Not only inflation, but hyperinflation. But guess what? In the United States, we have inflation too, which we'll talk about later. And that essentially is a hidden, a hidden tax chipping away at your hard work, your labor, and what you've been able to save during your life. Hyperinflation went out of control. In 2006, they had to drop three zeros off their currency. So 1,000 of their old dollars in 2006 overnight. Hey, congratulations, everybody. It's now worth one of the new dollars. Trade in your currency, and for every 1,000 of the old dollars, you get one new dollar. Think about that. Think if you had worked years of your life, saving up your retirement, put it in the bank like the authorities tell you, and then all of a sudden, you'd saved $100,000, and then hyperinflation happens, and the government says, don't worry, we're here to help you. Now your 100000 sorry, I had to calculate there in my head, is worth $100. Are you kidding me? That's insane. In 2007 on the black market, one US dollar was worth nearly 600,000 of these. In 2008, and these are from 2008. You see right there, 2008 series. In 2008, they removed nine zeros from the currency. So $10 billion in 2008 of their currency, you could trade in for one of the new dollars. So imagine you had 10 billion of the currency, you trade in 10 billion, you get one new dollar. During this time in 2008, foreign currency was used as really a de facto currency for the country. No one trusts this stuff anymore. They're using 
you know, US dollars or pounds or whatever they could get their hands on. At this time in 2008, one US dollar was equal to 2.6 billion of these. This is 50 million. 2.6 billion would have been equal to one dollar. So this in 2008 money, 50 million and 2.6 billion is worth a dollar. This is even worth a cent. But side note, the funny thing is, is this currency is kind of actually worth something now because people like me and collectors do like to buy it and talk about inflation. So if the people would have held the trash for a long time, they could be selling it on eBay now. But that has nothing to do with the currency. Nearly every day in 2008, inflation was at 98% per day. 98%. You go to sleep, you wake up work and then go to sleep 24 hours the next day. This is worth roughly half of what it was the day before. Prices were skyrocketing. People were literally having to use wheelbarrows to move currency. People were literally weighing the paper instead of counting it. It got so ridiculous. As of July in 2008, the inflation from the beginning of the currency was over 250 million percent. It got worse. In 2009, they, the currency, one trillion of the, this currency from 2008 was traded for one of the new dollars. So in 2009, they took off another 12 zeros. So hey, you have one trillion, and this is only 50 million. Hey, you have one trillion of the old currency. Well, congratulations, trade that in for the new currency. It's worth $1 now. 2009, that same year, they suspended their local currency. But you know what? Don't worry, guys. This is just a one-time problem. It hasn't occurred anywhere else. <clears throat> it can never occur in the United States. Paper currency is fine. We should trust what we're being told. But it has occurred many times throughout history, all over the world. France in 1796, Austria in 1922, Weimar Republic, which is a famous one in the stacking community a lot of people talk about, which is pretty much Germany in the 1920s. Greece in the 1940s, which was like one of the birthplaces of coins, by the way. And during their time and and their empire, they actually suffered from debasing their currency from gold and silver, which led to inflation. When currency is not based on something physical, gold, silver, etc., it has and will inflate away. It never has not in U.S. history. Every, I mean world history, every paper currency not backed by something in world history has inflated away. 1946 in Hungary. Uh, 1947 in China. Bolivia, 1985. Brazil, 1990s. North Korea, 2009. 2016 in Venezuela. And many, many other civilizations throughout history including the ancient romans but it could never happen in the usa we're safe here nothing like that would ever happen really did you know during the revolutionary war they had a 47 percent inflationary period that was about 1779 did you know during the civil war they had a similar similar inflationary period in 1864 even if hyperinflation never hits the u.s and it's possible it can it's possible it doesn't but even if hyperinflation never hits the United States, you are still losing your hard-earned money every day to inflation in the United States. And what do I mean? The Federal Reserve on their website says their long-term goal is 2% inflation a year. But we just saw in the month of April inflation over 4%, and that's the inf official number. The official number of inflation, which you know inflation's probably actually higher, but just in the month of April alone, over 4%. That means from your $100 in April, April 1, you had $100. April you know, 30th or 31st, you had $100. But during that one month, it went from being having the buying power of 100 to the buying power of 96 in just 30 days. Why do I stack gold? And here's Austrian gold here. Shout out to Austrian stacker. He'll like that. Ostrich. Why do I stack silver? I'll tell you why. It's a shield. And as Lynette Zhang says, shields are made out of metal. And metal to protect you in monetary terms is gold and, and silver. The metals preserve your buying power. The primary reason for gold and silver is not an investment. Not that it's going to shoot the moon. Like Dogecoin. Let's go. Let's go, Dogecoin. None of those reasons. The whole point is preserving your buying power and fighting against inflation. If you took this 
say this much currency took to buy this gold back in the day. You put that in a bank and that in a safe. Go forward 100 years, this is gonna be worth nothing except maybe to some collectors if you sell it on eBay. And this amount of gold is roughly gonna hold a similar buying power to what it has um, at the time you bought it. If you go back to Roman times with an ounce of gold, you could buy a nice suit, well, a nice toga, um, some sandals, a whole outfit, and go out for a night on the town. In our times today, if you want to buy a nice suit and do the same type stuff, it's going to cost you roughly an ounce of gold, and that's a couple thousand years later. Preserve your buying power, fight against inflation, to secure generational wealth, dynastic wealth, and to build a dynasty. Now, do I think there's going to be an opportunity to make more than what it's worth on gold and silver? Yes. Because I believe we're about to be in an economic downturn, economic crisis, the likes of which the world has never seen. Because this is the first time it's going to happen when we've been totally connected the way we are now digitally. So although I say it's a hedge against inflation and a way to preserve your buying power, I also believe there is a huge opportunity in the metals as well. What do you think happened to people's currency? Their paper currency in all those countries. Their years of blood, sweat, and tears making that paper currency, put it in the bank, doing what they were supposed to, inflated away, sometimes overnight. Many say in the comments below, and please, if you're new to my channel and you like what I'm saying, you wanna help me fight censorship, please subscribe and smash that like button right now. It helps me more than you know. But many people in the comments below say, gold and silver is foolish. It's not needed, it's a thing of the past. It's cryptos and this and that. And you guys, I got started in cryptos. I was mining Bitcoin in 2014. I did well with it. But the same reason I believe in gold and silver is the same reason I don't keep a lot of my current, my value wrapped up in cryptos because this is physical. Yeah, you can be in gold, cold storage and have on a trays of your coins, addresses. But I do that. I've done that for years. I understand it. But nothing beats something that has thousands of years of history. To me, cryptos are fun to play with. There's a place where, where value can be made, but it's highly speculative and highly dangerous. Whereas gold and silver, this is your foundation. This is your bedrock. But what do you think happened when their years of blood, sweat, and tears evaporated overnight? The central banks and the 1% are stacking gold. So while everyone's telling you it's uh, this is a thing in the past, cryptos, currency, money markets, blah, blah, blah. The same people that are telling you that are the same people that are acquiring metals at a breakneck speed, and so am I. When talking about gold and silver, and if what's gonna happen, what I think is gonna happen happens, there are other ways to make more or make more currency or value on top of these types of um, protections. You know, many people call this investments, I like to call it protections. But what is another opportunity in the metals realm that I do think is an investment opportunity? Because if I believe in stacking gold and silver, and it's ultimately going to win at the end. I need to believe and look into their opportunities in the gold to silver market, not silver crabs, but silver in general, right? So I believe there are other opportunities. So what I'm going to do here is continue my quest. In a couple videos, maybe five, ten videos, I've been talking about different companies, different opportunities, mining, not mining, funds, whatever, that have to do specifically with gold and silver. Because if gold and silver go, blow up, shoot through the moon, whatever's going to happen... Uh, well, those industries are going to, I believe, see uh, great things happen as well. So you want to build your base, your foundation of gold and silver. And again, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. My disclaimer is in the, the description below. But once you get a nice base, a nice foundation, a house built on stone, not on sand, I think it's also an opportunity to look into other ways to make more value. And I am continuing my quest, looking at companies and seeing what opportunities they might have. And I have found a very exciting company that actually offered to sponsor this video, and that is Gold Mountain. And let me show you why I think they are a unique opportunity. Let's go. All right, folks. Well, here we go. Gold Mountain. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, they acquired a soon-to-be operational mine for only $18 an ounce. These usually go for over $150 dollars an ounce so that is phenomenal um it's like you know five cents on the dollar so a lot of the work has been done access water access etc clearing stripping etc so it's like buying a fully furnished uh, mansion uh, so to speak uh for the price of just a mansion but you know a lot of mansions do come with a lot of nice stuff inside and hopefully you and me as a team 
making smart decisions can buy our own mansions. Uh, but one of the things I did want to talk about with this company is that they're operating, um, Gold Mountain's operating in British Columbia, and it's led by veteran mining personnel and operations as well as their executives. Uh, they've helped advance more than 15 mines into productions and raise collectively more than 30 million in capital markets. Okay. So kind of here's their team. It shows their management. It shows their board. Uh, but one thing I want to talk about was their advisors. So advisors really provide from a strategic level, which is important. So the gentleman with the coolest name in the industry, Tookie Angus, um, was the chairman of K92 Mining. And that stock has gone up over 800 percent since 2016. Phenomenal. And I wanted to mention Dr. Uh, Quentin here. Uh, he was the... Um, He's from Newfound Gold, yeah, and that has been up over six hundred percent in the last ten months. That uh, that 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 particular company, so that's phenomenal as well. Also, I wanted to mention that this project um, it will be in projection or in production in November two thousand and twenty one. So it's imminent, and there's only a few rare properties like this on Earth that go into production in twenty twenty one, especially with all the slowdowns and everything, you guys, that happened during. COVID. Uh, the cost to produce uh, is an ounce. So when you buy a mine, you buy it at a certain value per ounce. Okay, that's how it works. And then the cost per ounce is how much it costs you to get each ounce out of, out of the ground. So for this company, it's costing them about $850 to extract or mine or get out one ounce of gold out of the ground. Today's spot is about $1,892. So that means they're making well over 100% of their margins for each ounce they get out of the ground, which is phenomenal. I wanted to mention their vision. This company's vision is becoming a, the, well, a or the predominant gold producer in the Canadian mining space. Watch out, Parker Schnabel. No, Parker Schnabel. No, Tony Beans. You got to fight back. Uh, you know, joking aside, I do love the show uh, Gold Rush. But yeah, this company wants to become the leaders in that Canadian mining space. So, Wow. One way to do it is by uh, buying properties for extremely low margins and being able to leverage that <clears throat> and have huge profits when it's coming out of the ground. Also, also wanted to mention that they have 100% interest in the Elk Gold project, which is one of their projects. Uh, it also, they acquired, or Equinox, they acquired that in 2019 for 10 million at 10% down and 0% interest. So that's your $18 per ounce cost on the acquisition. Obviously, there's more cost uh, when they're going to mine it to get it out of the ground. Wages, insurance, reclamation, fuel, equipment, all types of stuff. Also wanted to mention that uh, they are targeting in 2024 uh, to be getting to be mining 100,000 ounces per year uh, out of the ground of gold, which consists in hybrid, high grade mining, uh, open pit, multiple open pit and underground operations. So one thing I want to show here is the 25% of the company is held by insiders, meaning like the workers, the leadership, etc. Um, so that shows they have skin in the game. I always want to make sure the people leading this type of stuff have skin in the game, which 25% is definitely skin in the game. Couple updates here, uh, you know, June 3rd, what are we, June 6th, so three days ago, uh, they signed some MOUs with the indigenous communities. Each You guys, it's not only critical in certain parts of the United States, but especially up in Canada. Uh, you can see here, they update their, updated their project economics at the Elk Grove. Okay, good. Gold Mountain completes 3 million property payment to Equinox Gold. By the way, I love to uh, metal detect, and I like to metal detect with the Equinox. There you go. Uh, Gold Mountain updates mineral. So you can see here, Extremely active, a lot of updates, a lot of things going on up there. So this is definitely one that's on my radar and one that I'm watching, and I think it should be on yours too. So you guys, if you check out their website, you can click on these presentations here under the investors. Uh, they've got a whole presentation here on what they're doing, including really nice work. You know, gold mining is not like it used to be. There's a lot of work and imaging and ex and, and testing and stuff that goes into place to actually prove something's worth it. Um, you can see here, here's the elk gold. Uh, okay, that's the pit. That's underground and then total. So, I mean, crazy numbers here. And again, uh, here's another fact sheet on what they're doing. 
So anyways, guys, uh, again, a big shout out to Gold Mountain. And if you're looking for other opportunities, I definitely encourage you uh, to take a look at them. And again, I'm not a financial advisor, just my personal opinion. Um, disclaimers in the description below. But yes, I think there's potential huge opportunities with this company. That being said, thank you for watching me, folks. This is my channel. Please, please, please subscribe. Please smash the like button. If you really want to support me, you can click this join button uh, here. Uh, you guys, let's get to 30,000. Let's get to 30,000. Let's do it. I've got over 900 videos on here for you to watch. Everywhere from being in the African markets, attacked by pirates on the Nile, my full stack, buying gold and silver in Saudi Arabia. You guys, literally baking silver in the freaking oven. Are you kidding me? I do this all over the world. I had to take a quick, a short uh, hiatus from traveling during the hashtag beer flu. I don't dare say the real name on YouTube due to censorship. Um, but you guys, I did this to share my experiences in life traveling the world with you. You make it fun for me. So please subscribe. Please smash that like if you do like my work. And I guess we'll say catch you on the next one. Woo! Here we go. This will be better. I can hit you with the CYOTNO bar. Catch you on the next one, right? So I'll say, catch you on the next one. Woo! There we go. Nailed it. Thanks, guys. See you later. Be safe and stack that metal to the sky. One stacker.